All right, welcome everybody. Let's do this calculus exam number one review. So um, let's look at the first question together. And here we have, let's just make this nice and neat. Let's set the resolution. Okay, so here in the graph to the right, the dashed line of the graph represents f of x. So here, let's just, this dashed line over here is f of x, right? And let's just kind of highlight it with the green so we can kind of get a better feel of what we're doing. And we're just gonna say that f of x is this, uh, you know, is the green, right? And then we have the solid line g of x. So let's say g of x is over here. And then we're just gonna have it with another color. And we're just gonna say that this is g of x over here. All right, bam, okay? Always take your time when you're reading these problems. Um, now the question is saying, at which of the following values of x? is f of x greater than zero and f of x less than g of x. So here we need to understand what this notation represents. If the question is asking for what values of x is f of x greater than zero, it's saying, this is saying, where is f of x above the x-axis, okay? So let's see why this is the inter interpretation of that question. So here, our green line is our f of x. So here it's saying that, where is f of x above the x-axis? And it looks like it's above the x-axis from negative four, like from here to here, right? And from here to here. So from these two intervals, that's where f of x is greater than zero. It's saying f of x is greater than zero is saying the y values. Where are the y values greater than zero? And all the y values greater than zero is everything over here, okay? Now let's look at the next part. It's saying where is f of x less than g of x? This is implying that where is the graph of f of x lower than g of x? So where is the graph of f of x less than or below g of x, okay? So here, just to go back to this first part, to highlight this notation here, uh, let's use the right color, let's use this red. So here, to, to highlight this, notice that it's from here to here, right? This circle of the red right here is answering this part of the question. And now here, let's go use a blue to what part of f of x is less than g of x? Well here, where is the green line below the pink line? So here, the green line is below the pink line uh, over here to here. All of this is where the green line is below the pink line. But now let's look at the answer choices. Here it's saying that x equals negative three. You see at x equals negative three, is the pink, you see, is the green above the pink? I'm sorry, is the green below the pink? And that's no. So here this answer choice is wrong. Is x, what about at x equals negative one? You see here at x negative one, notice that the green is below the pink and that this green is also greater than zero. So then this one's okay. And the same thing will happen here at x equals 4.3 because at 4.3, notice that it's above the y value of zero and it's also below the pink line. So then it's also okay here. So our answer choice will be uh, negative, will be two and three. So that will be this one, letter B. Okay. Let's move on to the next question. Here, this question is not too bad. It says, consider the function 2x squared plus 3x minus 2 and g of x where, where it's equal to x minus 2. So now it says, find f of g of x. So here, we have f of g of x. This is what we call a composition of functions. Composition of functions. So here, what is our g of x value? our g of x is equal to x minus two. So now we have f of x minus two. Now that we have f of x minus two, 
we're going to plug this x minus 2 into the f of x function. So anywhere where we see x in f of x, we're going to substitute it with x minus 2. So now this becomes 2 times. Notice that I'm just following this. Now you see where, I, where there's an x? I'm going to put x minus 2 squared plus 3 times x minus 2 minus 2. And that's it. But from here, we need to actually like evaluate this whole thing. So this part is pretty straightforward. This is just algebra. Here, we need to do x minus 2 squared first, and that becomes x squared plus, uh, I'm sorry, that becomes uh, x squared minus 4x plus 4 times 2. Right, this 2 is still here, and this x minus 2 squared is equal to that, plus 3x minus 6, right, 3 times x is 3x, 3 times minus 2 is minus 6, and this is minus 2. Then we need to go on with this, and what I'll do is, let me use a sticky note real quick over here, just to kind of, so we don't have to write on the paper. So here, this is 2x squared minus 8x plus 8 plus 3x, and this negative 6 minus 2 is also minus 8. We're just combining like terms. And then here, this 2x squared stays, negative 8x plus 3x is negative 5x, positive 8 minus 8, that's 0, so it's just 2x squared minus 5x. And is that an answer choice? Yes, that's letter D. Okay, let's move on. Now this one, um, I could see why out of all the topics we've been learning, this is a little frustrating, but don't worry, Mr. G is here. So for this question, it says identify the domain and of the function g of x. Here, notice that if I say what's the domain of x of 3 minus x, let's just look at the numerator. Wait, let me uh, fix the camera angle a little bit. Okay. What's the domain of 3 minus x? Well, the domain of this is just negative infinity to positive infinity. And if you're thinking, Mr. G, what on earth are you talking about? How do you know that? You have to understand what this looks like on a graph. What does 3 minus x look like on a graph? Well, if I have, you know, y is equal to 3 minus x, or y is equal to negative x plus 3, this graph has to look like the y-intercept. Remember, this is my y-intercept. It has to look like this, and then um, it has to look something like this. That is the graph of this y is equal to 3 minus x. And the graph of this What's the domain of this function? It goes to positive infinity and it goes to negative infinity. So that's why the domain of the numerator is negative infinity to positive infinity. But let's take a look at this graph here. This x squared minus x minus 20, you know it has to look like some parabola, right? But now, where does that parabola look? Where is it? We've done this many times in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. Notice that for x squared minus x minus 20 equals 0, if I factor this, take a set, pause the video and just factor this and solve for x. Okay. Now let's say if we solve it, it'll be uh, x minus 5, x plus 4, and that equals 0. And then x, equals, x minus 5 equals 0, x plus 4 equals 0, right? So x is equal to 5, and x is equal to minus 4. And now notice that if I plug in 5, into this function, I get zero. And you're not allowed to have zero in the denominator. And you're not allowed, and for this one as well, if I plug in negative four into this function, like if I do, you know, five squared minus five minus 20, I get zero. And the same thing happens if I put in minus four. But remember, we can't have zero in the denominator. So for this function, we know that the graph has to look like something here at 5 and something here at minus 4, and it has to be some u, right? That's what this function looks like. And what's the domain of this function? It's also negative infinity to infinity. But notice that the x values cannot be this. So basically, the domain of, of this rational function, what is the domain of this function? Notice that it can't be... If this is 0, right, and this is negative 4, and this is 5, 
It could be all everything from here to here. Notice that this is from negative infinity to negative 4. So then how do I show this as an interval? It's negative infinity to negative 4, comma. Now notice that there's a break. So we need a union. And then we need to show everything from negative 4 to 5. And let me make an open circle here too. So it has to be negative 4 to 5. And it's a parenthesis, right? Because we can't have x is equal to negative 4 or x is equal to 5. But then you also have any value from here to positive infinity. So then how do I show this as an interval? It would be from union 5 to infinity. And that is the domain of this function. All right? And what's this answer choice? Um, it's right here. It's this one. So it's C. <sighs> okay. Uh, welcome to calculus. I know this may seem like a lot, but it's not impossible. Okay. Let's go to the next question here. Uh, question number four. Here it says the graph of f of x is shown to the right. And g of x is equal to square root of 2x minus 1. What is the value of f of g of 5? So here we want to find f of g of 5. So now just be patient. Notice that if we read this question, it's saying that the graph of f of x is here. This is f of x. It's this graph. And now here, what's g of x? g of x is not, there's no visual for g of x. We don't have a visual for g of x. It's not on this graph. They're just saying that g of x is equal to this function. It's 2x minus, square root of 2x minus 1. So here, we need to do f of g of 5. And remember from yesterday's lesson, inside to outside. So here, what's g of 5? Well, g of 5, we have to put g of 5 into this function. So what's g of 5? It's equal to the square root of 2 times 5 minus 1. And that's the square root of 10 minus 1, which is equal to the square root of 9, which is equal to 3. So g of 5 is equal to 3. But now, you're going to take that g of 5, right? Remember, g of 5 is 3. And now, I'm going to put that over here. Like, I'm just going to substitute where that g of 5 is, and I'm just going to put 3. So then, this is f of 3. But what is, how do I calculate the value of f of 3? There's no formula for it. So what we have to do is we have to go to the graph. And if we look at this graph of what is the value of this f of 3, well, I just go to the x value at 3, and what's the y value? It's right here. It's at negative 2. And that's my solution. So it should be uh, letter D. Okay. Let's look at this function here. Notice this is f of x is equal to square root of 6 minus 2x. Notice that the square root of x implies that x has to be greater than or equal to 0. That anything inside the square root function has to be greater than or equal to 0. So the way we solve this is we say 6 minus 2x is greater than or equal to 0. And now let's just solve for the inequality. So then I say minus 6 minus 6 on both sides. So now I have negative 2x is greater than or equal to minus 6. Then what do we do? We divide negative 2, divide negative 2. And notice that when you divide or multiply by a negative value, this inequality symbol has to flip. It has to change sides. So a value, if we divide or multiply by a negative value, the inequality uh, flips. And then we'll put that in uh, quotations, right? So then here, this becomes x. We divide it by a negative 2, so this inequality flips. And then it's x is less than or equal to 3. But then how do we express this in interval notation? What I want you to do is pause the video and try and express this in interval notation. How do you show all the values that are less than or equal to 3? Right? So how would you show this? Um, x is less than or equal to 3. Just think about the number line. If this is 0 and this is the value of 3, this inequality states that it's all of the values 
less than or equal to 3. So what are the values less than or equal to 3? It's everything here. And notice that this is going to be everything from negative infinity to 3, but we also have 3 because there's that line over here that shows that you have the value of 3. So then this is your solution. And that should be letter uh, B. Oh no, not letter B, letter E. Right, because, oh, B is the trap because uh, we have three, so it has to be E. Okay, let's move on. Um, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see this question here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause the video and take a break, and then I'm gonna go on with the rest of the video.